Hello everyone, it is Doc Hitchcock and today's video is gonna focus on secret codes. Codes that can either win or lose world wars. Codes that your very existence depends on every day. So this puzzle here, as whimsical as it may seem, is reminiscent of a device that was used in World War II called the Enigma Machine that was used to break secret codes. And it was the understanding of how this machine worked that was pivotal in who won that war. And if you don't know who won that war, go crack open a history book. <laughs> but as important as that Enigma machine was to the outcome of the World War, there was another biological machine that is pivotal to pretty much keeping all living things alive. And that machine is called the ribosome. Ribosomes are large molecules or macromolecules that are found in all living things from fungus to bacteria to humans. And it's made up of a couple of different materials, one being proteins and the second being what's called ribosomal RNA or ribosomal ribonucleic acid. And RNA is very closely related to DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. And if you don't know what DNA is, go crack open a science book. I am just kidding. DNA is basically the secret code behind all living cells. It is an instruction manual on how to build an organism such as a human, as well as how to properly run and sustain that organism. DNA is comprised of four building blocks called nucleotides or bases, and they are called adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Combinations of these four building blocks are used to recruit amino acids to make up the proteins which make the organism functional. But DNA alone is nothing but a code, and it requires a code breaker, an enigma machine, if you will. It requires a ribosome. So how do ribosomes work? Well, you can start by looking at it like a ribosome sandwich. So <laughs> the two subunits that make up a ribosome actually sandwich a piece of DNA. So you can think of the ribosomes like the sandwich and the DNA is like the meat. So once the DNA sandwich is made, the DNA is pulled through the ribosome sandwich where combinations of three nucleotides or bases code for an individual amino acid, which is carried to the ribosome by what's called a transfer RNA or transfer ribonucleic acid, which has the complementary three base code to match the amino acid to the DNA sequence. As the DNA is fed through the ribosome, this process occurs over and over until you have a string of amino acids that eventually becomes a protein, which is processed, packaged, and ready for duty. But today, you and I are going to crack the code behind this guy, which is the puzzle Wordplay by Andrew Parr. There are going to be spoilers. You have been warned. So here you can see we have a nice little handwritten note from Andrew. Thanks for supporting my Etsy store. Enjoy the puzzle because that's where I purchased from is his Etsy store. And then it says an enigmatic puzzle box by Andrew Parr. So I think that that's actually a callback to that code breaking thing that was used in like World War II, I believe. Anyhow. Steps 14, difficulty 9 out of 10, so it should be a pretty difficult puzzle, a uh, pretty challenging puzzle, I should say. And then it says, greetings from London, Ontario, Canada, eh? I hope you find the tricks I've hidden within this puzzle box to be both challenging and charming. Please read the instructions. And the instructions say, wordplay is my homage to crossword puzzles and the vibrant puzzle constructors of our time. The reward for solving this puzzle is a well hidden and aptly themed puzzle, which will put a smile on your face. It does say that it's a durable box that can withstand a good play session when solved as intended, but use gentle touch. As you can see, there's some things here that were probably not super durable as far as rough handling. Pretty much figured that it's a Lego puzzle box after all. But in this one in particular, I did notice early on that this back here, you have some like little pieces that are movable and they look like kind of like Tetris shapes or something. So I'm assuming we can pull these off in these chunks like this, like so. And these chunks can probably be rearranged in order for this to actually make some sense. 
Because <laughs> right now, uh, this is the only thing here that would be a letter or even close, which is maybe a C, but I don't think that's the way it is. So I think that's part of the solution here. So if we take a look at the box as it stands, we see the word play title. This is the name of the puzzle. Really cool that it's right on there. As you can see in the front here, we have this pencil detail here, which is pretty cool. And we have this top piece detail here, these little bubbles on top. And so then we can see we have little legs here. You can see there's probably little clues um, all over the, the box here, where you can see that it's likely that uh, there's a drawer or something here. This is not atypical of puzzles that are made of Legos. You can see little cutouts where it looks like there's something that comes out here. Those are probably keys of some sort there. Uh, looking at the back, something probably happens there. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? And uh, maybe like right here as well. Maybe right there, I don't know. Maybe some of these, this looks like something. I'm gonna push down on that just to make sure. And then we have here a little window looking thing. And then we have a little thing here, little door. And I, you can't really see much in there, but I'm assuming something happens in there. You can hear there's something rolling around in there. All right, so, oh, one thing we should notice is there's really nothing on the bottom to speak of. It doesn't look like anything's gonna happen on the bottom. So we'll just keep this for now, just kind of like this. I don't think we need to change this much. So one thing that I noticed is that when you push down, you can see that these keys actually stay. So, and I'm not sure if there's any particular order we're supposed to do that in or how these are gonna feed into the puzzle. But also when I was flowing around that I noticed that by pushing up on these things, to actually reset these these little keypads. Really, that is all I can do at this moment, other than just kind of feel around to see if there's anything that pushes in. So I guess I could take this off, these little chunks off, since it says you can take chunks off. I just don't want to get them out of order too much. So I'm gonna take that off and just kind of keep it on the side here for now, just because I don't want it to get in the way of the solve in case something comes out the back or something like that. So I'm not really feeling any buttons yet, other than these things. I see a lot of potential for where doors are and such, but I don't really feel a lot of push anywhere. Well, here we got a bunch of these little dots. I wonder if anything like slides. Can you see that? Oh, interesting here. If you look right there, let me see if I can get this closer to a uh, camera. See how there's the difference between, let's see. All right, this dot here. Oh, look at that. All right, so see, I was gonna say that this one, you can see it's actually in a, it's in a Lego piece. This one, you can see that it's only one of those round thingies. I'm not supposed to take those off, so don't tell Andrew I did that. Oh no, he's gonna find out. <laughs> How do I get that back on the way it's supposed to be? <laughs> anyway, uh, there, that's, there we go. All right, so there's a button there. That's pretty clever, a little hidden button. All right, so I'm pressing pretty hard and I don't wanna break anything, so I'm not gonna press too much, but all right, so there's a button there. Don't know what it does, but it is there nonetheless. All right, what else? What else? What else? So what is this mirror thingy? Or not mirror. So what is this window thingy? I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with this. Uh, okay. So this, I think, might just be a handle. So I'm pulling on it, and it seems to be sliding open. I think that is actually a thing. Because <laughs> it's not falling apart, so I think I did something right here. Oh. Oh, what did I just do? Ah, look at that. We got a little thing coming out here. 
I'm gonna push that little pastel part. Oh no, what did I just shake loose? Am I supposed to take this all the way out? I don't know. <laughs> did I just break something? I think I just broke it. There's this little thing here. It looks like that's supposed to come out as a tool. Let me see. Oh boy, all this stuff came out. So I don't know if that was supposed to come out like that. Because <laughs> see, there's some stuff here. It looks like maybe I pushed too hard and it all fell apart or something. All right, so it is indeed the case that I was not supposed to have those pieces come out. That, that was not supposed to happen. So I contacted the designer of the puzzle and he informed me that those pieces were supposed to stay on. What we did was we actually just used acrylic glue like this one to actually glue those pieces back onto the puzzle because the puzzle requires the strength of those pieces to not be able to solve by mistake. So I'm gonna start over from scratch knowing what I know, but it doesn't get me very far. <laughs> So basically, if you open the window like we did before, so we, we found that window before. And when you push that before, it came right out. Like, see how it went a little bit out? So it came out, but there's resistance now because we've glued those pieces in. So to push it any harder would be to break it. So I'm not gonna push it any harder, but it tells me that there's an additional step that I am missing in order to get it out. And so we already found this button here, doesn't seem to do anything. So I think it has to do with some sort of sequence of the letters on this wordplay. So because this is loosely modeled off of the Enigma machine, we know that there's gonna be have to be some sort of code that we have to put in there, knowing that we can push all the letters down. So you can see that all the letters will stay down. Oops, there we go. And then we can push them back up by pushing these. And so the question is, how do we figure out the code? Because there's eight different letters here. And that's a whole lot of different permutations. So a kind of obvious thing would be on the back here, we see that these things that we took off before, I put them back on the way they're supposed to be. And we see that these symbols do not make any sense. They're not letters. But these are kind of, they are defined shapes, little Tetris shapes. And so I'm gonna take them off, try to keep them in the same order as what they are here. And what I thought is maybe we need to see if we can rearrange these pieces in order to, I've already messed it up, <laughs> in order to solve what the actual code is supposed to be. And then I'll move this aside. And so I'll just kind of loosely pull it apart here and so what we can try to do here is basically, so we know that these gotta be the corners probably. Oh, I'll take them out. Well, I guess this could be a corner too. So, well, let's just assume these are corners. This can't be a corner, these can't be a corner. Well, this could be a corner, but I don't think it is because the letter would be right against the outside there. So I think there's gonna be a border of white around all of it. Yeah, there we go, we have an O. So let's see, maybe we got our first letter here. Oh, we got another letter, OP. So I had to swap this piece out. There's two pieces that made the O complete. So now I swap that out, I got a P. Maybe the L, we can get that L back. Let's see if we can get the L back. I think we can. Yes, there we go. O, P, L. OPL, so let's put this up here. All right, come on, you stay there. All right, so let's try that. All right, is the window open? Window's open, okay. O, P, L. All right, fingers crossed. Oh, there you go. That is it. Okay, and there is the really cool mechanism that I will shine a flashlight into so you guys can see it. So you can see when I push the letter, that yellow thing comes up and blocks it. This one, the yellow thing. I'm gonna get rid of these. So 
So those don't have yellow things. The OPL just has these little gray things. And so it looks like you just gotta make sure those yellow things from these other keys are out of the way and then the gray things. Ah, so the gray things are sticking up. When you push them down, they go down and that allows this to slide out. Okay, so now we have our puzzle box intact. And so before we also saw that this little piece comes out here and probably fits into this little area here. And when you turn it, you can't turn it this way. But you can feel it turning this way, but it's a little bit hard. I'm afraid it's like a, you know, break if I push it too hard. So these are the little pieces that fell off. Some of these fell off before, and so we just glued those in. And then also this piece had to be glued in as well. And so this is what keeps it from popping out without putting the code in. So we definitely want that. I was playing with it before and I noticed that you can push these blocks out here like that. And two of them actually go the other way as well. But this one does not. It sounds like there's something caught in there, whether it's a ball or a piece. And so somehow this mechanism has to get out of here. So I'm thinking this is like a maze. Oh, when I let go of it, it made a weird sound like, let's see. Ooh, hear that? It sounded like it maybe, ah, it sounded like it went to this one now. Let's see, do I, ah, see, now it went to this one. Okay, now we're making some headway here. I have no idea. Oh, it sounds like it went down now. Did you hear that? I don't... It went... There it is. Ah, ta da. So it is a bit of a soccer ball, actually. So I'm not sure there's anything else to do with this because I used this mechanism here and this was the maze and it came out here. So I'm not sure if there's anything else with that. So we'll just kind of sit this up here with our opal and our little soccer ball and see what we do next. So we still have this little door, which looks like you could stick a soccer ball <laughs> into it. And then you have this little thingy here and then this little drawer here. And you have two little star thingies here. And then you have that button here. So let's go ahead and stick the ball in there. Right. Can do anything? Let's maybe push the button. There we go. Cool. That's a really cool mechanism, actually. How that works. So it holds onto there, but I don't know how that works. Let's see if I can figure it out. I cannot. <laughs> anyway, that's a pretty cool mechanism. And now we have this little tool here. So it's like a little wrench. Let me get that out. All right, stick that there. And I'm assuming that the wrench probably goes with something with this. So you can see there, uh, it doesn't look like you can actually use like the circle part of this. I mean, unless you want to just keep it there. <laughs> it looks like maybe you just use this to push. Ah, and something came out. The front here, aha. Uh -huh. The drawer is coming out. <laughs> and we have here, I think, a, our prize, which is a crossword puzzle by Andrew Parr, who is the designer of this puzzle. Anyhow, I'm not gonna sit here and solve this puzzle for you guys. I'm gonna actually stick this back in and reset the puzzle, and then we'll chat about this. Okay, so that was Wordplay by Andrew Parr. Overall, this was a fun, whimsical puzzle. The theme of the Enigma-type machine, although it seemed to kind of be more of a, kind of a cross between the Enigma and a crossword puzzle, as we saw with the final prize. But I like the fact that it's kind of a harken to the Enigma device. In the letter that Andrew sent with the puzzle, it did call it an enigmatic device.
And I do think that that was a call to the Enigma machine, which we talked about earlier in the video. And there were some really ingenious mechanisms within this puzzle. I mean, this is made of Legos and he has keys that are staying down and raising things up and lowering things. And uh, there was all sorts of mechanisms that I don't know how he came up with. So if you'd like to pick one of these up, you can go to his Etsy page at Lego Nerd Puzzles. And if he has one available, you can snatch one there. But if you don't want to get one for any reason or you can't, I hope you enjoyed solving it through my eyes. And until next time, I will see you later. Goodbye for now.